Hi everyone, I'm Jeff Hall. Um, this is a new show. Uh, I'm calling it Westford Tales. Um, and the whole purpose of this program is to talk about people in Westford and their stories, whether it be someone from the village or someone that's just moved in recently. Uh, over the years I've done several different shows. My interest is really on the history of the community. And what better way to kick off Westford's history and talk about oral histories than the master of oral histories of Westford, um, June Kennedy, who just happened to be this year's Westford Kiwanis Person of the Year. Well-deserved honor, and I want to thank you, June, for coming on the air with us today. Well, thank you for inviting me. Yeah. For inviting me. Incredible woman, June. She's um, going to talk a little bit about the projects, but June, you weren't brought up in Westford, were you? No, I, I grew up in Lexington, Mass. Mm -hmm. You cannot grow up in Lexington without having local history ingrained in your soul. I can remember the reenactments of Paul Revere riding into town on horseback, um, telling, telling us that the British were coming um, and warning the Minutemen. Um, and I also on April 19th every year I was a Girl Scout and marched in the Drum and Bugle Corps mm -hmm. playing the snare drum. And I do remember one Easter, I think it fell on April 19th, everyone at church was the days when people wore hats to church, everyone wore a tricorn hat. I mean just, <laughs> but like, it, was, it, was a, it was a wonderful town to grow it. So you've yeah. always had an interest in history? Yes I have. Okay, so, but you came to Westford. Okay? Yes I did. You, you and Charlie get married, and you moved to Westford in 1958? Yes. Describe Westford in 100 words or less, 1958. In 1958, <laughs> the population was 6,000 people. Okay. You could buy a house for less than you could buy, for half of what you could buy a car today. Okay. Discouraging for young people to hear that. Um, we, I live on Old Lowell Road. Mm -hmm. It was all pasture land and stone walls. And we were the first house on the right coming in from Carlisle Road. Today there are three new streets with extensions on them. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, La Salette Village didn't exist at the oh, time. Oh no, but even Misty Lane and Wagon Trail yes. just coming down yeah. here. Um, there was just one old farmhouse. And, but first of all, I should say this, with a, a lot of pasture land, and Mr. Wilder's cows were always meandering into our back, <laughs> into our front yard. We had a double window over our bed. Mm. And one morning I said to Charlie, there's a cow behind me. I could hear this kind of snorting. And he laughed and I said, no, I had lived on a farm for a while. We pulled up the shade and there was a big black, hole, black and white Holstein cow sniffing the petunias in our window box, about <laughs> six inches from my head. So it was very, it was really, it was really country. Um, it was it's a one, little different today out here. It is. June. It's um, a little different. Then the house, um, there was an old 1700s farmhouse diagonally across from us. Mm -hmm. And that was torn down two years ago. That's where Jim Arcero lived. He did live there yeah. for a while. Yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah. And it was really cold and drafty. Yeah, but, but <laughs> I was it, in there. <laughs> they, they tore it down, and now there are a million the houses across the street are going for a million dollars. It's yeah. a very, very different, yeah. different neighborhood. Um, so the, that's the so that's the, Westford. That's what it, what it looked like at the time. So you came into town, and you've got this interest in history. And so, how did you connect the two? Well, after about six years, when our, both of our girls were born, we started going to the little church uptown. And they had church suppers once a month. And it was just about three years after the two churches had united, the Congregational Church and the Unitarian Church. And they held, they held suppers, mostly older people. And I, I always was... Um, the kind of person who would sit on the couch and listen to my grandparents' tales, or mm -hmm. I wasn't, I liked older people. And I, I learned a lot from them. And then in 1965, I joined the Westford Historical Society. And they were looking for new programs, ideas for programs. And I always had a penchant for little one-room schoolhouses. The Parkerville Schoolhouse was right around the corner from yeah. me, although I'd only been in it once, mm -hmm. once at that time. Um, and I volunteered to give a talk on 
one-room schoolhouses in Westford. And I thought it all came prepackaged, but I found out <laughs> it did not. John Sanders had been a mailman in Lexington delivering mail on foot to our home, and he was living in Westford when we moved here. And he took me all around town and took, he took colored um, slides, Kodachromes, of all the, the 10 schools, uh, district schools in, West, in Westford. And I presented, I, I, and he told me about school moms. And one thing led to another. I remember Miss Tuttle was the first one. I had a lovely interview with her. And she told me about someone else who taught at another school and pretty, it mushroomed. And between all the, um, the interviews uh, or talks, then I went to the town and looked at town reports. And, um, and I did the, the um, gave a lecture at the Westford Historical Society. But not only did you do that, you had these printed in the Westford Eagle, am I correct? Well, well when the Westford Eagle debuted in 1970, <laughs> okay. somebody, I don't know if someone asked me or whatever, um, I, for 10 weeks, I ran a, an article about each of the 10 schoolhouses. But if you're looking, this is what the Westford Eagle would have looked like at the time. As you can see, it's a little bit larger than um, the Eagle we have today. But there was these articles that you put in on a regular basis. Am I correct, Joe? Yes, Alistair McDougall was the town historian, the, and he gave many lectures at the Historical Society, from everything from dolls, salt, ball, Oh um, my gosh, and he had regular articles in the, oh, in the paper? He did. All the time, yes. He, he did, yeah. but he talked about old tools or dolls, yeah. or he took us, he had house tours. Um, and I really, it really became quite interesting for mm -hmm. me. And I think he saw some new young blood. He would write his articles by hand. And, he, and once he saw the 10 articles about the schoolhouses, he started giving me random information about different art, historical yeah. Westford history. And so I continued for five years from 1970 to 1975, writing the articles. And they are laminated, um, there's a set at the J.B. Fletcher Library. So someone's, someone's got an interest in doing, in looking at them. Yes. They're on record at the Westwood Library. As you said, laminated like the ones I just showed. Yes, yeah. and someday the, they, these will be at the Westwood Museum, okay. a, a, col a, a collection of those two. Those, so that was one of your projects. We're talking, now you're into the 1970s and we're, we're approaching um, the bicentennial of the country. Right. 1976, and you started the project at that time, a major project. Well, even a little earlier, Bob Simmons was the librarian, and once those few, well, after a few years, I think it was you around Ellen night. Rainville was not the librarian? No. But I thought she was. <laughs> <laughs> she was a stat girl then. Yeah, I can remember okay. her carrying her mm -hmm. book of, you know, bag of yeah. books uh, to the library. No, he asked me after he saw some articles and several articles, if I would give a course in Westford's history. Okay. It was before the uh, schools were having extension courses. Um, and so I gave a couple of classes here at, and in my home. And um, then I, I stopped writing for a little bit and I got a call from Alistair McDougall wondering why. So I, I started again. And then when the 250th anniversary of the town, um, American, no, the American Bicentennial, 1975. Um, my husband was a Minuteman. This came oh, yeah. right through from Lexington. My Both of my daughters, um, one, young Martha was 11. She marched, they all marched to Concord. I made their outfits and they all marched to Concord. Um, it just, and his equipment is right behind me. Mm -hmm. Some of his um, Minuteman outfit here. Um, after I gave those courses, I said to the people who were in this room, I said, you know, someday I might write a book about Westford mm -hmm. so, because I was really getting into all the various articles and I, I really found that I loved Westford. And I... And it shows. <laughs> well, so the 19... And I really wanted to get a book together. So I started interviewing people. I interviewed 50 elderly and key people in Westford. The oldest person 
was born in 1878, mm -hmm. and I went up through 1924. But most of the people I interviewed were born before the turn of that century. And I want to tell you, it's very, some, it was, they would sit on this, they would come to my house, or we would, Charlie would lug the big old reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder to their house. I have 18 hours of tape recordings, which really should be digitized, I suppose. Um, and, and sometimes when they were telling their stories, they'd get very emotional and yeah. be teary-eyed. Other times, they would have belly laughs. Yeah. It was wonderful, but, the, and, and they would think, I'm telling you something that's worth putting in a book. It really gave them a sense of worth and dignity because sometimes older people are overlooked. Sure. And and when and they were the first buyers of the book when, <laughs> and all of their relatives when the when um, I finally did get a book out in 1979 called Westford Recollections. Yeah. Um, Westford Recollections. 1729. 1729, but that was mainly pictures. It was. I okay, had, that's I, the book that's, um, you know, that's mainly pictures. Yes, it is. Yeah. It was printed by the Murray Printing Company yeah. here in Westford. I had hoped that my 18 hours of tape recordings would become a book. I, in 1980, 1979, for a whole year, I ran articles in the Westford Eagle. I consolidated everything about doctors, schools, mm -hmm. stores, but I wasn't quite ready to have it printed, but I liked the way I organized it. So I did just take pictures with meaty captions. Where did you get those pictures? That's, that was the oh. thing. I look and I say, okay, there's McLeod store in Nabnasset. Where did where did June Kennedy go to get that picture? I interviewed one of the relatives of the son, I believe. I see. But people were very kind. They loaned me pictures mm -hmm. um, in 79. They loaned me the pictures. Uh, I did return most of them, but and they gave me a few artifacts, which I turned over to the museum. But then when I decided in 2005 to have the second yep. book printed, I had to get them back again. Westford Recollections of Days Gone By, this, this, the book, the interviews, the oral interviews that you did, June, they, they take you back to the turn of the century. And when I'm talking about the turn of the century, <laughs> I'm talking about going into the 20th century. Right. And stories about people, um, uh, people sledding um, on that hill by the Frost School down to the Fairview Cemetery and walking back up. Right. And I mean, you can think of doing it in, in today's world. Um, and, and stories like that to just really take you back, if you read it, to what Westford was in the early part of the 20th century. And but, it's, there's some, it's just some great, great stories in there. Well, For someone that's got an interest in history. Mm -hmm. Well, I felt like I knew some the people who were here before they had telephones, before they, it was horse and buggy yeah, days, yeah. before there was um, phones, dirt roads. Mm -hmm. uh, the grocery man would come and you'd call up and order your groceries <laughs> and the next few <laughs> days later, they'd, that's you. Uh, that, they'd, that's, they'd be, and Arnold Wilder was yeah. one of them and he had a choice. They moved, the, the Wilders moved from Lancaster, New Hampshire, May mm -hmm. 23rd, 1923, because I have it on the blackboard at the schoolhouse. Yep. and. He was offered, he went to work there after when he um, came down here, he went to the, graduated from Westford Academy and worked at the w Muffins on Main, but yeah. that was the old Wright and Fletcher store and he had a choice of using a Model T or a horse and buggy and Arnold chose the horse and buggy, yeah. more reliable, that right? That would be Arnold, yeah. Yes, yeah. right. Well, he told me, when you say more reliable, he told me the story of going back and visiting relatives using um, whatever car they had at the time, and having to change the tires <laughs> six times because the roads were so bad. Right. Flat tire, you get out, you just changed it, and he said, or patched it up, and he said, in order to get back to his hometown of New Hampshire. Imagine that. Right. So, right. Um, okay, June, from there, I mean, these projects certainly, I mean, June Kennedy became the source in town. If, if talked about Westford's history, it was June Kennedy that people went to or made reference to. But June didn't stop with just the writing. 
June got very involved, you said, in the Parkerville School. Right. What have you done over there? The schoolhouse closed in 1929, mm -hmm. and there were still 20, I found there were 22 students still living. I tape recorded 12 who lived in the area. It's amazing how many families stayed, people stayed in their family homes. And I corresponded with, with, with the others. When the school closed, it was empty for about th till 1933. And the, and the town was thinking of selling it for home, like most of the schools had mm -hmm. been. And the, parent, the, the parents of the students asked the town if they could keep, could, could have it as a clubhouse. And the town continued to own it and insure it, but the town said, yes, we'll, you may use it, but you have to keep it painted and repaired. Yeah. By 1989, um, the, the, the yep. parents got too old to be doing this, so the, the, the students were living in town. A lot of them took care of the school, and it was used as a clubhouse. It was called the Nunset Club. They Nunset had Christmas Club, parties yeah. and Halloween parties for yeah. the children in the neighborhood. Did the Grange use it at one time? Not, no, I don't okay. believe so. no. Yep. No, they used Town Hall, I'm sorry. Okay, yes, they yep. did. I went there one time when it was all mm -hmm. old-fashioned like that. And then in 1989, um, the... Uh, the old students were too old to be up on a roof and, and painting, mm -hmm. maintaining the building. So they, the town, um, they turned it back to the town briefly, and several of us um, saw that it was, might be sold as a home, and we had a petition, and, and um, 200 people signed it within 10 days, and, and the town said, it looks like your group's the most interested, so we had an open house. 400 people turned out, and we invited all the alumni. They were Oh, about 12 of them came to the party, and we were ready for them. Um, we found out who the electricians were and what they would like to use the building for. We thought a living history program would be nice, and my neighbor, Jenny Richards Johnson, had been a teacher in Acton, just retired. So it took five years to get the building restored. It really did. But I, in, in 1990, the year after we were given granted permission to be using it, I interviewed on tape again um, about 12 of the former students. And today, it took five years, Norman Nesmith, you perhaps oh, remember sure. him? Oh, sure, Norman. He had... One of my former bus drivers. Yes, <laughs> yes. He was um, doing some renovation out back, and he sold some property behind his house, and the young, bu the young builder became like a grandson to him. And one day, Norman said, you know, I went to a little one-room schoolhouse around the corner. Maybe you could help them out. They're trying to refurbish it, and uh, sure enough, he he put in a lot of yeah. time and effort. And in 1994, we had the open house, and in 1995, we had a class from Acton come. And um, what we did, I, I did the history lesson because I had the background, and Jenny did the dip pen writing and all the running around and bell ringing and mm -hmm. lots of lots of things. She she had had a program like this in Boxborough, so, and she had retired, so she was good wonderful teacher. And it was the two of us for about 12 years, and, but, but now we've trained about eight more Westford retired school teachers, which is very rewarding. But the, pers the good thing is that knowing the background of each student, they wear the name of the former student. For example, I'll say to the class um, when I take attendance, and there's a John Kimball, I'll say, I'll, I'll, I'll just say to the whole class, is it, does anyone here go to Kimball's ice cream? Of course, everybody raises their hand. And I say, John Kimball, you started that business. <laughs> and then he gets excited. And you lived in the farmhouse yeah. across the street. Yeah. Or we have all kinds of questions it's, that we ask. And they really can connect. It, it comes alive. It, it becomes alive for, for them. them. It's Absolutely. a very different day. And like, it's still used today. Is it? Fourth graders, third graders, third, third, third grade. graders from each one of the schools comes down. Yes. I, I know my daughter sent me a picture of my granddaughter when she was in the third grade. She's going into sixth grade uh, this coming year. Okay. Two years ago, all dressed up in... Oh, old-fashioned clothes. In, oh, yeah, the, absolutely. The school And month. she had the big bonnet on and all of that and came and spent a day here getting a lesson uh, in 
what it was like in the early part of the 20th century. Right, we have old fashioned games, no Twinkies allowed, <laughs> uh, no Coca-Cola, <laughs> lemonade or water. Yeah, and it's Westford, that's, it's, that's the key. It's, it's Westford and just the story about John Kimball makes that connection. With, he is. You know, these, Kimball Farm was started by a real person from Westford who was, my gosh, he went to school here? Right. You know, I mean, and those are things that you just, as a former school teacher, the kids just never forget you. Right, this is what the teachers yeah. tell me. It becomes very, you know, it's very, and they love to, to hear about themselves. Yeah. yeah. Right. No. Oh, that's, that's terrific. I guess, June, that, you know, that's, those are, are, are parts of, of your story. What would you say to someone who um, has an interest in history? What would you, how would you direct them? I, I think that your next project is the best way to do it. I think personally, the primary source, interviewing the people, is the best way to get, you know, history. Some history. You know, if you can get, sometimes people's memories aren't the yeah. greatest, and you, there might be a little margin of error, but if you can get six people to concur when you're reading their, your reviews, you know that that uh, happened. You know, June, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I know that you've, you've done these. Charlie Vogel, who was a school teacher um, at, uh, I forget which Abbott one, school. Abbott School, mm -hmm. um, he had his students do interviews as well back in the 1980s. And there's book, those booklets we have here also. Uh, and it's just m my group, Okay, and I grew up in Westford, mm -hmm. and we were teenagers in the 1960s, and, and whenever we get together, a group of us, and we always reflect back on that. I'm sure. saying, these are great stories that people should know about. Right. This is Westford, swimming in the quarries, for example. Uh -huh. And uh, as I was telling that story about swimming in the quarries, someone said, well, oh, my brother was there in the 1970s. And well, my uncle was there in the 1970s, and he said it was like Woodstock up there. <laughs> right. um, and so, I mean, th those are great stories, right. okay? Uh, and they should be told. They're all part of Westford's history. June, thank you. Uh, I want to thank you for uh, taking the time, coming on the air with me. Uh, it's a story uh, that, that should be told, and people should know who June Kennedy is. June. What, let me tell you, one of, the, one of the questions I often get when uh, your name comes up is, June's in a wheelchair, you know? Why is that? There's a, there's a very interesting um, story behind that. Why don't you tell us? Okay, well, when I was 19, I had a very, very severe case of paralytic polio. And I was in an iron lung for six weeks. What was the year, June? 1954. 1954. This is 1954. Important. In fact, it was the very summer that school children, elementary school children, had a trial run with the SALT vaccine. Mm -hmm. I went to the, I entered the hospital in September and stayed until July, but in April while I was there, I turned the radio on and they announced the SALT vaccine had worked, was successful but there had been a bad batch in Texas, so they withdrew it. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the very last epidemic came in 1955, and they did have to send me out in July. because I wasn't quite ready, but I went home and had continued with therapy at home. Um, but you know, I, and, and I was fortunate enough to, so that I was able to walk, you know, even though I, we had long leg braces and I'd walked on crutches for 32 years, braces. Mm -hmm. but, and I've been in the chair now for 35, I guess it is. Um, but you know, I wrote in my 50th um, high school, Lexington High School reunion booklet, I said that paralytic polio had altered my course, but not my destination. I have had a wonderful life. And most of it's been right here for 59 years in Westford. And so I didn't think of this, but somebody mentioned to me at the schoolhouse, they said, you know, you're not just teaching the history of Westford, you're showing some st students with disabilities that they can be productive in life too. And you know, Joe, uh, it, it's such an important part of this story because I remember dis discussing this with you um, a few weeks back. And I said, do you ever get discouraged? And you said, oh no. 
And it just was amazing. Oh no, I had I had the support. Um, Charlie, your husband, uh, I know what a wonderful gentleman he was. He was just just a fantastic individual, and he was so supportive over the years. Very, 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 very supportive. Um, and so you never got discouraged, and you took, and, it, and, and you're right because it shows that with a disability, you still can achieve great, great things. Mm -hmm. And this, this, it's right in front of us. Joan, here we are in this, this house that you've been in since 1958. It's bigger than the house you originally moved in. Yes. Okay? But there, if, if, you, if you look around, I mean, it's like, it's like going into one of the older homes, you could say. And I look at the wainscoting. There's a story behind that. There is. My husband did all the interior work. We, we built this in 1970, 69, mm -hmm. 70. My husband did all the interior work, and he got the wainscoting from Kimball's. There was a sawmill at Kimball's. And one of the beams here, beam behind me here, okay, with the... Um, the lantern on it? With the little lantern on it, yeah. That came from um, the, the old barn and the Howard Place on Howard Road. Right. But some of the furniture oh. in the house is Charlie made as well. Correct? Oh yes, the chandelier the, yeah. in the old bar, the old uh, wire fence that divided our property from the Richards. We, you, he used that, and he, 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 it's all handy. Wire fence didn't keep the cows out, though, did it? No, not those cows. <laughs> not those cows. No. And then the brick, the brick in our in our foyer in our front walk, and the fireplace were all um, from the mills that they had destroyed. They had. Um, De demolished in, in Lowell. In Lowell, yeah. Yeah. So, so we, when you we come into a, the house, you see that brick as you come in. Yes, and the fireplace, yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Well, thank you very much, June. I appreciate it. Uh, one of the things, uh, being the, the authority, foremost authority on oral histories in Westford, um, I'd like to kind of pick up where you left off. Oh, and you, um, you'll do a fine job. Well, I know. thank you. Thank you. you. Uh, your endorsement means a great deal. One of the things that uh, I would ask the audience, it can only work if people are willing to come on and do the interviews. And I know that there are a lot of stories of Westford out there. And so if you have a story, uh, if, whether you're a lifelong resident, you've been here 10 years, 20 years, 40 years, uh, I'm sure you've got something to share. And if you do, if you'd like to come on the air, um, contact the studio, um, and they will contact me and see that uh, you can either come on the program, or if you not, don't want to get in front of a camera, then we can always tape something and possibly put together another oh, book like the, like the one, one June did, did <laughs> for um, the latter part, part of the 20th, 20th century. century so. So. Right. right. And that's it. Thank you very much.